Hello there, I'm Mike and welcome to Disney Parks Addict. Today, we'll be taking a look at all the rides, shows and attractions in Tokyo Disneyland at the Tokyo Disney Resort. Stick around until the end of the video to see the amazing parades and nighttime entertainment that are on offer at Tokyo Disneyland. The park opened in 1983, making it the third Disney resort and the first outside the US. Although many of the attractions are similar to those found at Disneyland and Magic Kingdom, in recent years, Tokyo Disneyland have been adding more of a national identity and attractions with distinctly Japanese qualities. Let's take a look at this amazing Disney park. You enter into the World Bazaar, which is similar to Main Street USA, but also totally unique. It is covered by a glass Victorian-style conservatory roof to shield guests from the Japanese weather. It features lots of dining and shopping locations, as well as two side streets that take you directly to Adventureland or Tomorrowland. Similar to other main streets, there is also an omnibus that can be ridden throughout the day and the Tokyo Disneyland Band that perform as well. You can also find the Penny Arcade with lots of antique claw machines, sports games and other fun arcade machines. If you're heading straight through the World Bazaar, you will come to one of the best castle reveals at any Disney park, as well as the huge main hub area which is perfect for viewing the parades and nighttime entertainment. As with all my attraction guides, I will be heading around the park clockwise, so the first land you will come to is Adventureland. This land is a mix of different sublands, starting with the New Orleans section that houses the popular dark ride on water, Pirates of the Caribbean. This is most similar to the Disneyland version and features all the amazing scenes including a pirate ship battle, a ramsacked town and treasure coves. There are also a few appearances from Captain Jack Sparrow and Davy Jones. You can also dine in the Blue Bayou restaurant that overlooks a section of the ride. Further into the land, you will come to the Theater Orleans, with the current show being Jamboree Mickey Let's Dance. This is a high energy dance party that is perfect for the younger guests to dance along to and can be enjoyed at this wonderful outdoor seated theater. As you leave the Orleans section, you will enter a more jungle themed adventure land, starting with the classic boat ride Jungle Cruise Wildlife Expeditions. Join aboard this cruise as you meander down the river while being surrounded by some amazing animal audio animatronics. The indoor temple section features amazing projections and at night, the Jungle Cruise takes it up a level with amazing lighting and sound effects throughout. If you can understand Japanese, you can hear the skippers tell the corny punny jokes, but if not, you can still enjoy the amazing scenery. There is actually another attraction that shares the same entrance building to the Jungle Cruise, which is the Western River Railroad. Unlike other Disney parks, the railroad at Tokyo Disneyland doesn't go around the whole park and it only has one working station, so you won't be able to use it to travel to other areas of the park, but with all that being said, it is an amazing attraction and well worth a ride. The steam train travels through Adventureland, Westernland and Critter Country. You will travel through some amazing attractions, including Splash Mountain, and Big Thunder Mountain, as well as being able to see some beautiful dioramas and scenery. Next to the Jungle Cruise and Railroad is the classic Disney show with a twist. The Enchanted Tiki Room, Stitch presents Aloha e Koma Mei. This features all the impressive audio animatronic birds, flowers and tiki statues, performing songs from the original Tiki Room show, as well as Lilo and Stitch before being interrupted by the mischievous Stitch. He wants a part in the show and is allowed to perform a song as long as he doesn't interfere with the show anymore. This is a wonderful show and is a great mixture of classic Disney and something fun for everyone to enjoy. Opposite the Enchanted Tiki Room is the final attraction in Adventureland and another classic, the Swiss Family Treehouse. This is a pleasant walkthrough attraction, giving you some great views of Adventureland. It is based on the classic 1960 Disney live action film, Swiss Family Robinson, with plenty of Easter eggs dotted around the attraction. This was actually added 10 years after the park's opening in 1993 and is the centerpiece of Coral Landing, a shipwreck town sub-area inspired by Typhoon Lagoon. The water Water Park at Walt Disney World. 
We now move on to the next area, Western Land, which is Tokyo's version of the more commonly known frontier land at other Disney parks around the world. First up is the Country Bear Theatre, which most will know as the Country Bear Jamboree. This is an awesome little show featuring amazing audio animatronic bears singing tongue-in-cheek country songs. The songs are sang in a mixture of Japanese and English, so can be enjoyed by more guests. And the show also has two different special overlays. The Jingle Jamboree can be seen during the winter months with plenty of Christmas songs, and the Vacation Jamboree is played throughout the summer that includes more of a rock-based soundtrack. All versions are amazing and is definitely worth a watch. Next up is the popular Big Thunder Mountain. This mine train roller coaster really doesn't disappoint. The theming is fantastic and takes you on an exciting journey through the dips and turns of an abandoned mine. You'll also encounter dinosaur bones, hear the cranking of the lift hill and bell whistles, and have a very enjoyable ride overall. You can take a relaxing ride on the Mark Twain riverboat that cruises around the rivers of America as you take in the sights of Western Land, Tom Sawyer Island, and Critter Country. It's a nice little 20 minute relaxing ride, so it's perfect for taking a break in between some of the more intense attractions in the park. As we just mentioned, you'll be circling around Tom Sawyer Island, which you can access by taking a raft boat within Western Land. The island contains caves with references to characters from the 1876 Mark Twain novel The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, and provides interactive, climbing, and scenic opportunities in its caves, forts, and other exciting landmarks. This is another nice relaxing attraction that offers a bit of breathing space away from the more popular areas of the park. We now move on to the smallest land in the park, Critter Country, that is home to two attractions. First is the classic log flume ride, Splash Mountain. This will take you on an exciting journey with Br'er Rabbit as he leaves home for an adventure while being pursued by the despicable Br'er Fox and Br'er Bear. As you probably know, this attraction will be getting a re-theme to the more popular Princess and the Frog over at Disneyland of Magic Kingdom, but there hasn't been any announcement for Tokyo Disneyland's version, so will most likely retain the original design. At over 10 minutes, this is one of the longest attractions in Tokyo Disneyland and is a great way to cool down on a hot day. You can also enjoy Grandma Sarah's kitchen that is located in the mountainside of Splash Mountain and offers stunning views of this great attraction. In Critter Country, you can also take to the rivers of America on the Beaver Brothers Explorer Canoes. You can join in the fun as you paddle around Tom Sawyer Island while taking in the amazing sights of Tokyo Disneyland. This only operates on busy days, usually weekends and the summer months, and will close early to prepare for the nighttime shows. The Beaver Brothers have also been linked in with the backstory of Splash Mountain, fully completing this immersive land. We now move on to Fantasyland and the 11 amazing attractions that it has to offer. The first attraction you will see as you enter the land is Dumbo the Flying Elephant. This is the classic aerial carousel style ride that is perfect for younger guests. This is the only attraction that can be found at all six Disney castle parks worldwide, so you know it's a fan favorite. Next door to Dumbo is the Haunted Mansion, an attraction that you wouldn't usually find in Fantasyland. This offers great theming, a fun storyline, and awesome special effects. It has one of the greatest ride pre-shows in the infamous stretching room before you head on to the Omnimover ride system that takes you through many different scenes within this classic dark ride. During the Halloween and Christmas season, the Haunted Mansion is transformed into the Haunted Mansion Holiday Nightmare, which adds themed elements and a whole new soundtrack from the popular movie A Nightmare Before Christmas. We need to head into the beautiful Cinderella's Castle for the next attraction, Cinderella's Fairy Tale Hall. This walkthrough has a mixture of paintings and murals detailing the story of Cinderella, and once you reach the Grand Hall, you can sit upon the throne and see the infamous glass slipper. There are also some interactive paintings that reveal secret messages when you take a photo with them, which is also great fun. Right outside the castle is the classic dark ride, Snow White's Adventures. This ride certainly lives up to the name, as it has continued to keep the darker storyline that the original Disneyland version replaced in 1994, mainly focusing on the Queen's transformation into the witch and her evil plan, with Snow White only appearing once throughout the ride. This isn't the fun, happy attraction that it may seem, but it is thrilling nonetheless. 
From one classic attraction to another, next door to Snow White's adventures is Peter Pan's Flight. This amazing dark ride takes you through some memorable scenes from the classic Disney animation. On board your own flying ship, new scenes and digital effects were added to the attraction in 2016, which only adds to this already fantastic ride. Back into the main Fantasyland courtyard and directly behind the castle is the Castle Carousel. This is your chance to ride on one of the beautiful wooden horses or chariots on this classic carousel ride. I think it is best to ride at night to enjoy the amazing scenery around Fantasyland while listening to an organ based soundtrack of Disney classics. On the other side of the courtyard are two more attractions, the first being the 3D show Mickey's PhilharMagic. This is a great show filled with classic Disney characters and a fun storyline. Join Donald Duck as he goes through scenes from some classic Disney animations including Fantasia, Aladdin, The Lion King and more. It is currently under refurbishment and will include some newly added scenes from 2017's fan favourite Coco when it reopens on September 15th 2022. Next door is another dark ride, Pinocchio's Daring Journey. This is a fun attraction which will take you through scenes that feature the Stromboli Circus, Pleasure Island, Monstro the Whale and other characters from the 1940 classic animated film. Similar to Snow White Adventures, this is a lot darker than it looks on the outside, so I would advise warning the younger guests before riding. Next is the spinning teacup ride, Alice's Tea Party. Based on the unbirthday party scene in Disney's Alice in Wonderland, you can enjoy this nice classic Disney attraction and don't forget to look out for the hidden dormouse that appears throughout the ride. Right at the back of Fantasyland is everybody's favourite dark ride on water, It's a Small World. This is a classic Disney attraction featured in five of the six Disney resorts around the world. It includes over 300 audio animatronic dolls in traditional costumes from cultures around the world and the classic theme song that can be heard in Japanese, Mandarin and English that will get stuck in your head for days. In 2018 it had a full refurb which included the addition of 40 Disney characters that can be seen throughout the ride. Before we move on to the newest area in Fantasyland, there is one final attraction in the main area which is Pooh's Honey Hunt. Although it is similar to other Winnie the Pooh dark rides, this uses a trackless ride system which allows the riders to glide smoothly from scene to scene. Opening in 2000, it has been praised for its use of new technology and still remains one of the most popular rides in the park. In 2020, Tokyo Disneyland opened a whole new area of Fantasyland based on the Beauty and the Beast. It includes the Beast Castle, two dining locations and the exciting attraction Enchanted Tale of Beauty and the Beast. This is also a trackless dark ride that takes you through the story of the animated classic all set in the Enchanted Castle. All the scenes feature amazing audio animatronics of Belle, the Beast and other characters from the movie as well as a soundtrack of all your favourite songs. Many people are saying that this is the best new Disney attraction, so let me know if you agree in a comment down below. Also in this new area is the Fantasyland Forest Theatre and the brand new original show Mickey's Magical Music World. This is a great show that sees Mickey, Minnie, Donald and Goofy discovering a magical music box deep in the forest. Throughout the show many Disney characters appear as well as plenty of classic Disney tunes that will have you singing along with joy. Make sure to arrive early for this amazing show. We now move on to the next land, Toontown, which was added to the park as an expansion in 1996. This land is filled with lots of fun playhouses and a chance to meet and greet different Disney characters. You can take a look inside Mickey's house and meet the main mouse himself, or meet Minnie in her unique style studio. You can also take a tour of Minnie's house and Donald's boat, have some fun with the interactive elements at Goofy's Paint and Playhouse, or burn off some energy at the play areas in Chippendale's Treehouse and Toon Park. There are also some rides in Toontown, with the first being Gadget's Go Coaster. This is a junior roller coaster themed to Gadget Hack Wrench from Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. This is the shortest Tokyo Disneyland attraction at a whopping 44 seconds, but is still entertaining for the younger guests nonetheless. The final attraction in Toontown is Roger Rabbit's Cartoon Spin, a dark ride themed to the movie Who Framed Roger Rabbit. As the name suggests, this ride spins as it follows a track through a variety of scenes featuring a host of characters from the classic 1988 film. 
So we now move on to the final land in this guide, Tomorrowland. First up is the newest attraction in the land, the Happy Ride with Baymax. This gives you a chance to ride with the lovable healthcare companion robots from Big Hero 6. This whip ride swings guests round and round to a backdrop of an original pumping soundtrack and is great fun for all the family. Next is the amazing indoor roller coaster, Space Mountain. This is a staple of any Tomorrowland, which includes an atmospheric spacey queue line and an almost pitch black ride through, with a few special lighting and sound effects. It has recently been announced that Space Mountain will close in 2024 and will be completely rebuilt into a much more futuristic style, along with a brand new Tomorrowland Square that is set to open in 2027. Next to Space Mountain is the indoor amphitheater Showbase, which currently houses the high energy show Club Mouse Beat. This stage show uses a variety of show sets and musical styles that includes characters and songs from Cars, Zootopia, a goofy movie, and of course, Mickey and Minnie join in with the fun in this entertaining show. Make sure you arrive early for this one. You can meet Stitch at the Stitch Encounter, an interactive show that allows younger guests to communicate with Stitch via a live satellite link up. It's amazing that the real time computer graphics really feels like you're talking to Stitch as you will need to assist him through a variety of challenges. Due to the nature of this technology, it makes each viewing a totally unique experience and even though the show is only in Japanese, it is still enjoyable to watch. Opposite Stitch Encounter is Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters, the shooting dark ride that lets you compete with your family and friends to get the highest score as you help Buzz Lightyear take on the evil Emperor Zerg. Next is Star Tours The Adventure Continues. It's a simple 3D motion simulator ride that has gone on to be added to many other Disney parks around the world due to its popularity. It was updated in 2013, which added a variety of scenes from all three trilogies. With these new scenes, there is a total of 384 different combinations, giving each ride a completely unique experience and gives the chance of a lot of rewritability. The final attraction in Tomorrowland is Monsters Inc. Ride and Go Seek. This is a fun interactive dark ride that transports you to the city of Monstropolis as you join in a game of flashlight tag. Each guest is given a flashlight as you try to find all the interactive elements which will activate when you shine a light on the different Monsters Inc. helmets. All the popular characters can be seen throughout the ride at the various themes that are set after the first movie. This is a great original attraction that's a lot of fun to compete with your family and friends. Now let's take a look at the parades and nighttime entertainment that Tokyo Disneyland has to offer. First up is the daytime parade Dreaming Up. This features 13 floats celebrating fantasy and imagination. Starting with Mickey and Pluto, the parade includes characters from Winnie the Pooh, Pinocchio, Big Hero 6 and Mary Poppins, as well as the Disney princesses and other classic Disney characters. Starting in Fantasyland, the parade route comes down through Westernland around the main hub area in front of the castle before ending in Toontown. You can also enjoy the Tokyo Disneyland Electrical Parade Dreamlights that features Mickey and his pals as well as characters from Aladdin, Toy Story and other Disney films, appearing on colourful floats that uses special lighting effects that makes this a dazzling nighttime show and one not to be missed. It uses the same parade route as the daytime show, so there is plenty of space to enjoy this amazing parade. There is also a modest fireworks show called Disney Light the Night, which illuminates the nighttime sky with colorful fireworks to the soundtrack of classic Disney songs. So that wraps up all the attractions in Tokyo Disneyland and unfortunately it is extremely difficult for international travelers to enter Japan at the moment. So I would suggest following our friend of the channel TDR Explorer. Chris runs the number one Tokyo Disney YouTube channel with awesome reviews and up to date information. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description box below. If you enjoyed the video, then don't forget to hit the like button as it helps us to share it to more people. And consider subscribing as we love to make videos about all the Disney and Universal parks around the world. And if you want to help support the channel, you can check out my new Patreon page in the link in the description. If you want to know more about the other park at the Tokyo Disney Resort, Disney Sea, then check out this attraction guide here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Disney Parks Addict.